One of my biggest tips for getting the most out of Notion is using pre-made Notion templates. These templates have been crafted by Notion experts who know the app inside out. They often spend countless hours putting them together to create the perfect system. It can really save you a lot of time. And in this video, I'll be showing you all of the best ones and explaining where you can grab them from. Let's jump straight in. The first template that I'm gonna be showing you today is my ultimate second brain template. Now I spent a lot of hours putting this together. It's essentially an all-in-one productivity system. So I'm gonna briefly show you the different areas that it covers. So firstly, we have the task manager. So this appears on the homepage, but I also have a separate page with even more depth. We've also got projects and goals, and I've set up these useful little cards that give you an overview of either the project or the goal. So on the projects one, it's telling you how many tasks you have left, the due date, and how many days to go until the due date. And this will say how many days overdue it is if it is a past due date. I've also got a similar system here for your actual goals. And I've also actually built the para system right into this template. So if you're not familiar with with Para it is a productivity method designed by Tiago Forte. It stands for projects, areas, resources, and archives. So that is what this section here is. So it's essentially how you can organize your digital notes into key areas of your life. So I've added this life zone area where you can map out all of the different key life zones of your life. So maybe you're into fitness, maybe you're learning Spanish, maybe you have a YouTube channel. For most of us, we'll have things like work and family. And we also have reference areas, which are just things that you're interested in. So they're not necessarily big portions of your life but they are things you're interested in like literature cooking so the idea with this system is that you can save notes or articles that you find interesting to any of these categories so as an example let's click on my youtube life zone and you'll see all of the notes that i've made for youtube so here is the dedicated youtube page so firstly it will pull through any current projects or goals that you have for this life zone so i have a goal here which i have actually reached now so i can get rid of that one and also some projects as well and below we have the note section so these are all of the different notes notes that I've created that I've labeled as YouTube. So it's one easy place for me to come to see all of my notes. And on this side, we have a web clip. So these are articles that I found online that I thought were useful. And these have actually been grouped together based on the domain. So I can actually open and close this to see all of the articles from this particular website. So I've also added tons of other features. We have a virtual notebook here, and we also have a recipe tracker, a book tracker, and a journal as well. So there is absolutely so much to this template. And as I said, it uses Tiago Forte's para method, and it also uses David Allen's guest getting things done method, which is another really powerful productivity method. So the idea is that you can capture new tasks and notes really quickly. That's why I've got this quick capture box here, which appears on every single page within the template. So you can simply click on the button here if you want to add in a new task. You can just note down the task and close the page off. That's all you have to do. It's designed to be super, super quick. Then when you have some time, you can head over to the task manager and you'll find that new task in your task inbox. So this is where you can actually add some more details. So you can add a due date for the task. So let's say this one is for today. You can add a priority and you can also associate it with a particular project as well if you need to. In this case, this one isn't related to a project. So I'm just gonna leave that blank. And then I can change the status here to processed. That will now disappear from our task inbox and you'll now find it here in your task list. And once I've completed the task, I can simply check it off and it will then disappear from the list. So it's a really, really handy system. I've actually been using this second brain template for a while now and it has really increased my productivity. So if you are interested in this template, I will of course leave a link in the description box below. And the second template that I want to show you is this ultimate travel planner. So I've been using this as well for quite a while now and I really love it. I am someone that travels quite a lot. I've actually been a digital nomad for a while as well. So this comes in really, really handy for me. So here is a quick overview. We firstly have this database here, which gives you an overview of all your upcoming trips. So as you can see on these cards, it gives you a few different details, like how many days to go it is until the trip, the actual dates, how many days and nights the trip is. And I also have a separate tab here for any potential trips. So this is maybe trips that you're thinking of doing, but you've not actually booked yet. Now, once the trip has been completed, you can click on the status here and change it to completed. And it will then move into your completed trip section below, which again, covers just a few key details about the trip. And it will have a countdown for how many days ago the trip was. Now, there is so much more to this template. It also allows you to create an itinerary for each trip at save activities, restaurants and more. So let's just set one up as an example. So I'm gonna click here to add a new trip. So let's just say that I'm going to Bangkok. And I'm just gonna select the trip template here, which is gonna populate it with all the details. So I'm just gonna fill out the dates up here for the trip. So let's just put some in as an example. And I'm also gonna select the country here as well. So I have pre-populated this template with all of the countries and a lot of dependencies as well. So you can actually just select it. You don't have to add any of this yourself. It's automatically there. These two properties here are automatically worked out for you based on the dates that you've inputted. And you can also select the city here. So if it's one you've been to, you can just select it from the list. Otherwise you can just add a brand new one. And here is the actual 
trip template. So I have some key areas here where you can input your hotels. You can even upload documents here like your hotel reservation. Again, I've got the same thing here for your outbound and inbound flights. I've got an area for your packing list, a map, and another area for any other important documents like visas that you might want to upload. So this is really useful because you can keep all of your different documents in one place so they don't get lost. I've got this section for budgeting so you can input your budget into here and you can then update it with the actual cost afterwards and you can add any notes. And then we have the actual itinerary itself. So this actually uses quite a clever system to build your itinerary. So to start, we have these two sections down here, restaurants and activities. So you're simply gonna list all of the restaurants and activities that you're you're interested in doing so let's just add a few as an example so let's add some activities so I've just inputted a couple of restaurants and bars and some activities down here so you can actually fill in a few different details like the cost and any notes um, but all you need to do is on the day you just select whichever day you want to do this so let's just say that this one I'm going to do on day one and I'm also just going to put this activity here as day one as well and let's put this one as day two this one is day two and these can be for day three now if we have a look here at our itinerary as you can see the items that we've just added have automatically been pulled through into our itinerary so this is something that we can reference throughout the day and if you actually add the costs in here as well it will automatically calculate that for you so let's just add a couple in here so maybe I'm planning on spending $30 you can also put in the approximate cost for the actual activity so this one's quite cheap this one's more expensive okay so I've added a cost for each of the restaurants and activities so as you can see it's now summing the total cost for that day for me as well which is really helpful and you can also add in the cost for your flights hotel and travel insurance so it will sum it up for you as well so that is the actual trip planner. I do also have a couple other really fun features. So I actually have this where to next section where I have countries, cities, and US states. So let's just click on the countries one as an example. So I actually spent countless hours inputting every single country in the world, as well as a ton of dependencies. So things like Aruba, Hong Kong, things like that into this system so that you can come on here and simply just select either the countries that you visited or the ones that you want to visit. So we have a few different tabs here. So this is the country list, which lists all of the different countries in the world you can use the search bar here if you want to search for a particular country I've then got a tab for where I've been so this tab will pull through all of the countries that have been labeled as visited so these are all of the countries that I've visited and we also have the wish list tab as well so if you select any as a wish list they will appear on this page and I've also set up this fun little progress bar here that will calculate how much of the world you've explored so that's based on the where I've been page and the ones labeled as visited so I've explored 10% of the world which is quite cool so that is the travel planner again this will be linked in the description box below if you're interested at all. And the third template that I want to show you today is this finance tracker. So I've added a ton of useful features into the finance tracker. So firstly, we have the account overview. So this is where you can actually see the current balance of all of your different accounts. It also includes things like any loans, student loans, credit cards, even cash as well. You can see all of the balances on here and it will automatically calculate your total outgoings and your total incoming for each of the different accounts. So this is the monthly view. I've also got a yearly view and an all time view. We've also got the transaction report so this would be the monthly transaction report so it will just show all of the things that you've added into the system along with the date how much you spent and whether it was an expense a transfer between different accounts so for example you can actually transfer money say from your debit card to your savings account and also any income appear on here as well I've also got a separate tab for any investments because I know a lot of people do investing so I wanted to keep it separate to the main account transaction so here are just some investments that you might have made into stocks for example I've also set up this really handy monthly budget tracker so you can set a budget for each different area so I have things like rent bills groceries and so on so the budget will appear here and then it will actually automatically calculate your actual spend throughout the month and it will then tell you if you're on budget or if you do overspend it will tell you here that you've overspent so this will update automatically every single month so you can set the budgets yourself but every single month it will automatically update to the next month and again it will also automatically update your actual spend which is really handy I've also got some other useful features here like a subscription tracker so this will automatically work out the annual cost for you or if it's something that you pay annually it'll automatically work out the monthly cost so you can easily see what you're paying at a glance and I've also got this bill tracker as well that will tell you if you have any payments due for your bills so if it's not due soon it will say no payments required if it's overdue it will say overdue and if it's due soon it will actually tell you the date that it is due on I've also added this investment tracker so you can add any investments that you have as a card here so it will show you the total amount that you've invested the current value of the investment and then it will actually 
actually work out for you the percentage change so whether you're up and down so you can see the arrow will show up if you're up it'll show down if you're down and the percentage as well so that is the main portion of the finance tracker i've actually set up a ton of different pages here so you can view different things you can add your transactions in here you can view your transaction reports by income expense or transfers i've even created a net worth calculator and a yearly report so you can see your income and expenses broken down by different years I do just want to mention at this point that the templates also come with a full YouTube tutorial on how to set it up and how to make the most out of using it. If you're really into reading, then you might like this ultimate reading tracker. So we firstly have the current reading list. So you can add each book that you're reading as a card on here. So you can say when you started reading the book, it will also show you your progress or which page you're on and there's a progress bar as well. And once you've finished reading the book, you can change the status here. I also have a different tab for any books that you've not started. So any that are just on your reading list, you can add to this page and it will show you a brief overview of the book. And if any of these books you particularly want to read next, you can actually just click on the status here and change it to wish list, and that will add it to this wish list tab instead. So these are all of the books that you want to read next. And after you've actually finished reading the book, you can update the status here to finished, and it will then display in your completed book section, and you can actually input a star rating, and the tracker will also automatically work out how many days it took you to read the book. Another really cool thing about this tracker is that it does come with a book review. So if I click on this one, as an example. Here are all of the different details about the book that I filled out. And here is the book review template. So I did actually include two different templates, one for fiction books and one for non-fiction books. So this one here is the one for non-fiction books. And I've even included this database here where you can actually input any of your favorite quotes or learnings from the book as well. Another really cool feature is the reading stats. So I've actually got this stat section here that will automatically calculate how many books you've read this month, this year, and in total. And we've also got the reading log stats. So again, it will calculate how many hours you've spent spent reading this month, this year, or in total as well, which is really cool. I've also added a ton of other useful features here so you can actually see all of the books that you've read grouped by their genre on this page. So this is what it looks like. It just brings up all of the different genres that I've added into the template and how many books you've read in each one. And if you actually click on this, it will bring up the exact books that you read. So this one is action and adventure. So here are all of the books that I have in the template related to action and adventure. And these are the ones that I've actually read. And I can just see the key stats about it, like my star rating and how long it took me to read. I've also got a reading goals page if you want to set goals for your reading. So this is the goals card. So all you need to do is actually write in the goal books that you want to read this year and the goal books that you want to read this month and this card here will automatically update and it will actually automatically calculate how many books you've read so how far along you are in achieving that goal so this month as you can see I've read one book so it's saying that you've read one out of 15 books this year so you don't have to add these stats in yourself you simply just label a book as read and the date that you completed it and it will automatically update this for you. I've also got a few other key pages here including a reading log and a quotes and takeaways page where you can view all of your favorite quotes or learnings from all the books that you've read. And the final template that I want to show you today is the 12 week year planner that I've set up. So I actually made a video on this recently. I will link it in the description box below if you want to see it in depth. So it's based on the 12 week year book by Brian P. Moran and Michael Lennington. It's essentially how you can achieve your 12 month goals in just 12 weeks. So I've actually set up a template that will help you plan your goals for a 12 week period. So let me show you the example. So firstly, in this block here, we input all of the goals that we want to achieve in the overall upcoming year. So these are some 2024 goals that you might have. We're then gonna break these goals down into smaller 12 week goals. So these are things that you can reasonably achieve in 12 weeks, but they should be ambitious because the idea of the system is that you can achieve more in less time. So here are a few smaller goals. So my overall yearly goal for YouTube was to get to 20K subscribers. So I've broken this down into a slightly smaller goal that I can achieve in 12 weeks. Now, to ensure that we're actually achieving these goals, we want to break these down into the tasks that we're gonna do every single week to achieve them. So we've actually got a separate toggle for each week of the 12 week period. And this is where we're gonna list all of these specific tasks that we're gonna complete. So you'll simply input the name of the task. You can relate it to the specific goal up here that it relates to. You can select a frequency. So this is how often you're gonna do that task during the week. So this is week one. So I've got complete Duolingo lesson and for my getting to be one level in Spanish goal. So this one I wanna do every single day of the week, but there are some other tasks like this one, which is post one video on YouTube. That one I'm only gonna do one time during the week. So I've labeled it as one time, but
but there are all of these different options that you can select from. You can input a due date, so that's the next day that you're going to actually complete this task. You can then use the checkboxes here to check off if you've completed the task. Now, the really clever thing about this system is that the progress bar here, which measures if you've completed the task or not, is actually related to the frequency. So as you can see for this task, the frequency here is daily, which means I have to do it every single day. So that's seven days out of this week. So therefore, I've had to check off all seven of these checkboxes for this progress bar to go to 100%. But this task here, post one video on YouTube, I've labeled the frequency as one time. So I only need to complete this task once during the week in order to have achieved the task. So I've checked off one checkbox here. And as you can see, this progress bar has gone to 100%. Now, if I change this, say I wanted to upload four videos during a week, I could change it to four times. And I've not changed anything else, but the progress bar has gone down to 25%. So now I would need to check off four checkboxes for it to go to 100%. So that's the beauty of this system is that the progress is completely dependent on the frequency. And all of the progress bars here actually all feed into the progress bars that you see on the overall goal. So this is how you know how far along you are in actually achieving the goal as a whole. Now you can open and close these toggles as you like and it does go down all the way to week 12 so that you can plan tasks for all 12 of the weeks. I've also set up a filtered view. So if you want to only see the tasks for a specific goal, then you can actually just click on it. So let's click on this one. And this brings up the exact same task database, but it's a filtered view. So it's only bringing up the tasks that are related to this YouTube subscribers goal. So it's just a little bit of an easier and cleaner way to view the exact tasks for each goal. So back on the dashboard, I have set up this template button. So if you click the button, it will add a blank template. So after every 12 week period, you can just generate a brand new blank template and start again from scratch. So this is a productivity method that I've just started using and so far I'm seeing massive gains and I do believe that it's really really effective. And that's it. If you're interested in any of the templates that I've shown in this video then I'll leave a link to each one in the description box and if you found this video useful then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.